Pandora's box is an artifact in Greek mythology connected with the myth of Pandora in Hesiod's 700 BC poem, Works and Days. Hesiod related that curiosity led her to open a container left in the care of her husband, thus releasing curses upon mankind. AI has been released from Pandora's box, but whether or not it releases curses upon mankind is really up to us. However, some are warning that we need to slow our role in the development of this technology, lest we end up with Terminators or something worse, like a 24-hour TV network dedicated exclusively to the Kardashians. We'll take a look at the latest news from the AI world today and pepper it all with some good fun. This is the Bad AI Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Who's bad? It's the Bad AI Show. Joel Com here, Travis right there. We are your bad hosts, but you are our exemplary audience. So welcome to the show. I am Travis the Robot. Welcome to another podcast. We appreciate you tuning in and in, 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 listening. Thank you. You've been ODing on corn, and so you're you're stuttering. I'm, I'm, uh, you know what? If you tune in here to the Bad AI Show... You know, we'll talk about that a little bit later on at the end because we have this bad crypto, bad media community on Uncut, and we dropped something cool that we can talk about a little later on in the show. So stay tuned for that. We did indeed. Let's go ahead and jump into the uh, the news that is hot right now. And beginning with this story right here from Entrepreneur, Elon Musk says that we should stop rapid AI development right now and gave his reasons why. Amongst those, you know, he said he started um, uh, um, open AI. He was one of the, the creators of open AI and uh now that it's being used as a uh, a profit center, um, he's like, this is not what it was intended to be. And he's worried about it advancing quickly and becoming getting in the hands of corporate greed and getting into the hands of uh, bad actors, both domestically and abroad. Yeah, I, you know, I'm torn on this one because for one, if I was Elon Musk and I invested a hundred million dollars into open AI to create it with my vision and gave it to Sam Altman. And we're working on this thing. Let's create this thing that will benefit humanity. And then Sam Altman and the rest of the guys said, no, nah, we're going to actually sell half of it to Microsoft and be focused around business only. Giving open AI to Microsoft is horrible. I don't care if they gave you $10 billion. You probably could have asked Elon Musk and he would have given you a billion more, right? You don't, and, and then he gave a hundred million and didn't get any percentage of the company. I would be very upset. And now with what Microsoft is doing, Microsoft is rolling out Chad GPT faster than I think open AI is even comfortable because they have so much swing now. Um, Chad GPT four, they did not want to release that to the public yet, Joel. No, they didn't. And, and this letter is basically saying that, um, they have to make sure that the impact on AI is going to be positive and the risks manageable, mm -hmm. noting potential economic and political consequences. And a Stanford University report from a couple of years ago says that the potential to become a threat uh, to democracy and a tool for fascism is something that we have to watch out for in, in AI. But, you know, as I alluded to in the beginning, Pandora's box has been open. Like right. what we're, we're going to have regulation all of a sudden that says, oh, you need to stop this. And like, yeah. they're actually going to stop. Come on. This should have been this should have been years ago. But the thing is, is like if you've seen any of the recent sort of congressional hearings with any tech leader, like most recently, TikTok guy was there and they're asking him questions. Our congressional leaders are not so smart when it comes to technology and they're out there you know i remember whenever zuckerberg was on there and they're like wait a second so if i'm on facebook does that mean i'm on the internet like did you just literally ask that question you dumbass like congressman like jesus and so these are the people who are who are going to regulate ai and they're going to regulate crypto and they're going to they don't even understand how shit works they're just more worried about how to make more money in their pocket it seems to me that's this is my my first thought is the one that's shared by Bill Ackman, who is a, uh, a billionaire investor. And basically, mm -hmm. he's saying that our enemies are working harder to develop their own 
their own open AI. Right. It would be a mistake to delay the Manhattan Project and let the Nazis catch up. I don't think we have a choice. He's right. absolutely right. You know, that's we're exactly already, the case. The Western right. world is falling behind, as we, you know, you and I have talked about. The BRICS nations are rising. You got China. You got Russia. Like they would love nothing more than for us to pause development so that their AI would be better. You know, you yeah. want to talk about a threat. Right. Stop developing so the enemies to right. uh, our freedom can move ahead. Yeah. We got to put some we got to put some uh, stop gaps in something to sort of ensure that bad things don't happen. But when they're talking about it's the fast track to losing democracy, right? Because then you got AI that doesn't have any conscience at all. It's just programmed to do certain things. And you want to keep somebody within a box, within a panopticon in some way, then it would be easier to do. So that is that is a concern. But then, you know, you think about this, like, really, are we just going to let China have six months to catch up? That's not good. Now, the thing about China and AI, Joel, is different because of the alphabet issue. So in America, it's really easy because like here's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They can go out and read the words. Now you're talking about Chinese, which is there's all of those are different characters in, in uh, you know, Arabic. All of those are different characters. And so you really got to do computer vision. Language learning is a little different, I think, with those types of languages. So it might take them a while to get caught up. Um, but there's no way we shut down. We just got to be smart about it. Italy, if you're an Italian and you live in Italy, they've shut down chat GPT. You can't access it right now. So there's that so is... many pissed off. Italian. You don't want to piss off these Italians. Well, we can't use chat GPT, huh? A bunch hey, of the bullshit. Pasta Fazul, don't tell me that I can't be looking at the AI. I want to I wanna see what we'll I got to learn how to cook the pizza. You're taking off on my chat GPT, yeah? Yeah, here's a story from the BBC News all about that. And a chat GPT banned in Italy over privacy concerns so you know you got this little thing called a vpn may have heard of it i'm pretty sure they have in in italy and so what's next what's next is they uh they say oh we're gonna make vpns illegal i mean it, it, talk about well fascism. that's quite frankly joel that's what's going through right now in the u.s congress is they're having that bill that oh we want to ban tiktok which is in reality what it's doing is if you look at that bill it essentially codifies what the former Twitter executives were doing for the U.S. government and literally group sanctioning people and censoring people. That's kind of what they want to legalize and codify through that new bill that they're trying to do where they're going to, oh, we're going to ban TikTok because it's so bad. Well, how about ban TikTok on government devices? Probably a good idea. If somebody wants to opt in, you know, China's probably stealing your data. You should opt in. But you can't use it as a blanket to ban everything. When you start banning technologies because we, because the nanny state doesn't think you should deserve that, then only the powerful people are going to have access to those. And we are on the road to digital serfdom. It, it's a major problem. And, you know, you mentioned China. And so I picked up on uh, this story today. Mid Journey is the, uh, the latest to cave to uh, Xi Jinping that uh, they want to minimize drama. So basically they're saying that you they won't allow deep fakes of uh, Xi Jinping, the, the Chinese president. But meanwhile, right. you can make all of the deep fakes you want of Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Like there's no right. danger there. There's, there's mm -hmm. no danger at all of that. But, you know, heaven forbid that you right. have uh, Winnie the Pooh <laughs> <laughs> with the Chinese president. Seriously, is your ego so fragile that you can't have people even commenting on stuff? Like, seriously, in my opinion, Xi Jinping, there's worse things than being called Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is lovable. You most certainly are not. So you should at least take the positive benefits. I go, oh, man, look at Winnie the Pooh. It's, so, it's, uh, oh, it's adorable. You are not. Winnie the Pooh is. You suck. Because you, you know CCP who said, hey, stop it. You're hurting our Fifi. So uh, the uh, is he the CEO, <laughs> the CEO of Mid Journey? Uh, he, he is saying here that political satire in China is pretty not OK. And at some point would endanger people in China from using the service. So, look, deep fakes are going to endanger U.S. citizens, European citizens, Australian. There's uh, this is part of the, you know, Pandora's box is open. But this catering to China is something that is not new. There is an ongoing list on Mashable.com of companies that have bowed down to Chinese censorship pressure. It's, it's very interesting to see exactly what each one of these companies has yeah. done in order. It's to foreshadowing, Joel. Yeah.
If they're bowing down to these guys, wait until we become those guys and they bow down to them. When you start bending the knee, there's no ending to bending. There's no ending to bending. That That's nice little uh, rhyme you did there. Yeah, it's a long list, too, in these companies. Just yep. uh, no no courage, not mm-hmm. not a testicle in sight at, at any of these companies. And, yeah. you know, I would say this. It's like I like technology. I like this technology from the positive aspects of things that it can be that it can do. Like if we spend our time and I was having a conversation with Chris Snook over the weekend, he's uh, we do the Web3 show together. And he was like, you know what? We should really focus on being a positive force for this because if we want to look for negative things to look about in this we can always find them there's no shortage of things to complain about Mm -hmm. in any space but if we take our time and try to find the things that do the most coolest stuff that's uplifting humanity that's where our better use will be so i am spending a lot of time on that but then again i am human and so i look at some of these things i'm like man there are some potential catastrophic consequences that could happen if this is not used correctly joel and you're, that's a very positive take on a negative thing. I mean, it's just, it, it's undeniable. You have to be blind and living in a cave to uh, to not see what could happen here. What could not see as people turn into them. Right. So uh, Google is uh, rolling out BARD, which is their AI engine, their chat mm-hmm. GPT competitor uh, in the US and the UK, but they're doing it slowly. I guess there was a promo video that they were showing and um, an incorrect answer was shown and Google shares immediately went down $120 billion in value overall. It's like people just reacted. Oh, $120 billion. Yep. Wow. So here's the thing. Google bought DeepMind years ago. They've been working on AI behind the scenes through their own very corporate, in my mind, very corporate. We know how biased Google and, and Silicon Valley tends to be. So I would assume that this is a very, you know, if, if you like, hey, I'm a conservative, what do you think about me? It, that probably doesn't think very highly of you. I'm not, I haven't played with Bard yet, but they've slow rolled this out for a reason because they're building it all internally, utilizing it for all their own properties. Open AI comes out and like, whoa, we better do something. Then then Microsoft comes out, buys buys some of uh, open AI. Now Google's like, oh, damn. And then Microsoft comes out with a polished event and Google comes out with a polished turd. It wasn't even polished. It doesn't look like <laughs> it's just, it's just so, a turd. Yeah, yeah, needs a little help. It says it's not currently supported in your country. I wonder if it Puerto well, we're Rico Puerto or Rico. the U.S. Yeah, we're Puerto Rico. So, yeah. OK, but you're talking about some positive things happening with AI. This is a heartwarming story right here. Matt Wolf, who yep. uh, runs future tools dot IO. <laughs> Love really this guy. Cool Tune in his content. He's spectacular, dude. Did a really cool thing. He uh, he posted initially this on Twitter right here. I've just made the silly little JavaScript game 100% with GPT-4. I have zero coding knowledge, and I couldn't tell you what a single line of the code is doing. But he documents in here exactly what he would did, what he did, yeah. and how he got it to uh, to create this thing. Uh, the video you see here has been is now more sophisticated. And if you go to our show notes, you will find a link that he he made a um, a twenty six minute video that shows step by step how he did this thing. I pointed this out to uh, to my son Zach, and he is now working on a, a bot uh, game that uh, role-playing game that's going to run through his uh, his Twitch stream. So while people are watching, they can play along with, with this thing. And um, it's, you don't need to learn to code anymore, gang. You need to learn to prompt. Yeah. Turns out that was bad advice, telling people to learn to code. You just need to <laughs> learn the AI. Fucking learn to prompt. Learn that's to it. Prompt. Like I show some of this up people and they go, oh my God, how did you do that? That is unbelievable. Like it's prompting essentially, right? And so, uh, yeah, tune in to Matt Wolf, Future Tools. He's doing great stuff over there. Um, so this is coming out. And also, let's talk a thing about what we did, Joel, with um, Blockchain Heroes, right? So we got a little something going on. We've uh, we've used AI in a cool way with Blockchain Heroes. That's a set that we created over three years ago, Blockchain Heroes. And we've launched several different pack sets on WAX. Well, we've taken these characters that we've created, and, and, and Joel and his son, Zach, have helped ideate, 
And now we've created a new version, which is Blockchain Heroes Energize, where we've used AI on some of our popular characters, right? Energize me. Yeah, this is if you're holding Blockchain Heroes NFTs from uh, from Wax, then you're able to participate in this and get a, an energized one NFT Wax pack. You can go to the show notes that we'll have linked up for this episode for you. You can go watch this video and, and read more about um, how it's going to take place. It, it's it's really cool. There's just AI is opening up this uh, this avenue for creativity that we uh we didn't have before to get yeah. more cool stuff done quickly and uh, you know you <laughs> have been going so deep down this rabbit hole with mid journey and using these tools uh, there is a running gag in the kingdom of bad cryptopia the republic as it were it's corn jokes and we dropped an nft to a hundred of our members that um that were quick enough to grab one from mm -hmm. the uh, Bad Crypto Nifty Club, which you, you want to show our Nifty and... Club there, pop up the Nifty yep. Club so you can actually see. We created Captain Corn. It was just a joke. It was at, literally, Joel, it Captain joke. Corn is the very first image that I ever created from start to finish with AI. So it I was, was like, oh, it man. was a joke. It was, it totally was a joke. A it was joke. a poop joke, right? Corn, you can see it twice. You eat it and then it comes back to visit you. And so we can always make jokes about it on Bad Crypto We make corn jokes. And so that's why Captain Corn is who he is. And so, well, on Wednesday of last week, we said, hey, there's 89 of them have been claimed. So what we did was if you sign up for the membership, you get some drop to you, but some you got to claim on your own and claiming them on your own creates engagement. You got to come back and play around. Well, we had Captain Corn as one you had to claim. There he and is. There's Captain him, Corn. <laughs> you have Captain Corn. So we sent out a message. To all the members who did not have a Captain Corn saying, hey, Captain Corn, there's only 11 of them left. And boom, within that hour, they were all claimed. They were gone. And uh, in order to have one of those, you needed to have this bad crypto nifty club membership NFT. And uh, you can go get one of these right now, badcrypto.uncut.fm. And uh, we'd like to give them away for free. But we don't want bots to get them. So we put a minimal price on there. It's 0 0.000002 ETH, which right now is currently $3.68. When you have one of these, you get NFTs dropped to you. In fact, you can see uh, right here, if I go to the collection of NFTs that we have dropped, member airdrops everything that you see here if you had a membership card uh, these are stills but many of these are animated these are dropped to you and a lot of them go along with episodes of the bad crypto podcast so travis starts messing around with these this corn idea and uh why don't you explain what you came up with so so basically i was like well let's make something special for the captain corn and so i went in and i said you know what i want to create like a little figurine I want to create a little cool little Pixar kind of a statuette figurine, kind of like a pop statue, but not quite like a pop. And so that's corn inspired. So here we are. We have these, we have Jester Jimmy Crack Corn, Baron Von Harvest, Duke Kettle Corn, Colonel Cobsworth, Count Cobb Daddy. And we have King, we have Sir Lord Sweet Corn, which is based off of me. We have Sir Lord McPopperton. That's their Joel right there. And we have Sheriff Maisie Mays, and then we got King Shucks the second. So these are all dudes. So what we have is uh, coming up eventually. There will be some uh, Mystic Corn Maidens, and they will show up. There will be a queen. There's like a whole story now. So basically, the land of Cornucopia has been built and is being built using Chat GPT four, using Mid Journey, and we've dropped. Each one of these NFTs, there's 10 of, we dropped them to those 100 users, and now the fun will really begin as we've come up with a kind of a property that seems to me that's like a mix between Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Care Bears, um, you know, Sweet Pickles, uh, and some of these other sort of things mixed all into one, Veggie Tales, it's kind of all one sort of yep. uplifting thing to inspire and, and motivate and make people laugh. So more on that coming and you, there will be opportunities for you to get a, uh, a corn wizard here in the not too distant future, but you're going to want to have one of these bad crypto nifty clubs to participate. So go to bad crypto dot uncut dot FM, pick one That's of these, right. up. become a corn it, star, just have it in your hub, go to corn hub, become a corn star You do all that. <laughs> so we've gotten some great reviews for the show and we what? appreciate it because no, we the audience. Do we really? 
continues to grow five stars from Julian Perrot. He says a must for the modern world. These guys are always informative, frequently funny, well, sometimes funny, easy to listen to. There's never a dull moment in their shows. I also love their bad crypto podcasts. Julian, thank you for that. That was nice. Not your average corn farmers, says the next one from The Frog Nose. Uh, Joel Kahn and Travis Wright are my go-to guides for navigating the complex world of advanced technology tools. Their expertise and enthusiasm are a breath of fresh air among other AI experts. I would not say we're an expert yet, but we are explorers, that is for sure. I highly recommend their guidance to anyone looking to learn more about this fluid technology because corn will come back and haunt you if not. It's a breath of fresh air because I, I do breath mints. Like oh, that good. right there. Uh, thank you, bad knowledge daddies. I love and appreciate how unconventional in and against the green you guys are always pushing other people to do their own research and ask their own questions. And that's why he has a daddies. I don't understand that. Thank you, <laughs> sirs. Okay. That's okay, daddy. <laughs> All right. Uh oh, it's me again, Stalker Albert. Having just left a review on Bad Crypto Podcast, I thought I would come here and also leave my five star support for you guys. Once again, Joel and Trav have become the intrepid explorers diving into the new tech that is coming at us at such a fast pace that it would be hard to keep up if that were not the case. Uh, want to want to know about AI? Listen and watch the Bad AI Show. I uh, say it like as if you were a rapper saying, all right, I uh, keep up the hard work team listening in. Thumbs up emoji. P.S. I learned that I could adjust mid journey today with slash settings. Thank Trev. Oh. Good job. Good job. Right. So um, we would love your review as well. And to uh, to tell people about the bad AI show, we're going to be rewarding people with a very special gold uh, bad AI show NFT. And it's currently it's not been minted yet. It's in the process right here on Uncut. And this is the cool uh, gold bad AI. For those of you who have done a review, uh, these you're in the queue to get one of these when we drop them. But uh, if you want to get one of these, go give us a five star review on iTunes and screenshot your review. Email it to us at badcryptopodcast@gmail.com along with your Ethereum wallet address. Screenshot it, email us, include your Ethereum wallet. We'll put you on the list. I, I reply to them. I say thank you for your support, and you're on the list. So if you want to get one of these, that's how to do it, and uh, and we appreciate you guys listening. There you go. I think that's it, Trav. That, that's that cool. is good. I really appreciate you guys, too. You guys are tuning in, listening. We're having fun chatting about this. So if this is entertaining to you, I'm glad that that is the case. Uh, if One of the things that I've been thinking about, Joel, as we're wrapping this show up, and I'm not going to go in long on this, this is a call for you to do your own due diligence. If you go to CoinGecko and then you click on Categories, you could scroll down and find the category that's called artificial intelligence. These are some cryptos that are building on artificial intelligence and in it, and they're doing different things. So I would maybe not a financial advice, but start doing some research on AI plus crypto tokens. If you find a spectacular one, maybe let us know, but uh, have some fun. There's a bunch of them out there and there's gonna be a lot of things that are happening in this space. So keep an eye on that and hopefully you find the right one. There you go. That is a, a good tip for you right there. Check out what CoinGecko has got to say about that. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening and or watching. We do appreciate you. Catch you on the next episode. Until then, stay bad. Oh,